Corner Talk. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so right now we have Miranda Maverick on the show, who just a couple of days ago booked her fight against Sabina Mazo for March 12th in, you know, a short notice uh, fight. And, uh, you know, we're excited to have her because, in my opinion, you are one of the most well-rounded prospects that we have. And you're still so young. So, uh, you know, I'm uh, looking forward to pick your brain. How are you? Thanks. I'm doing really well. And yeah, I'm excited to have taken a fight. Finally, I feel like I've been waiting a long time. And we were going to think about May because that's when I was told maybe a fight would arise. But uh, here we are short notice with a couple weeks, just like last time. Yeah. So how, how did this uh, whole thing come together? Um, I got a call and said, uh, you know, hey, do you want to fight Sabina? And it was funny, just a few hours before that, I got an offer to fight one of my own teammates that uh, the matchmaker had forgotten was my teammate. Oh, <laughs> so, really? Uh, yeah, because both of the flyweight fights on this card um, had somebody drop out for the first opponent go around. So I got offered to fight her and I was like, that's my teammate. I'm one of her main training partners. And then a few hours later, I got a call about Sabina and I said, let's do it. Mm. And um, so how does it differ like going into a... A short notice fight like this uh like what what kind of training do you do what kind of how do you approach this well there's definitely less skill training that would be involved in an eight-week camp it's more focusing on that my cardio is good and that everything i'm already good or bad at is is on point right mm-hmm. and looking at sabina i i like studying fighters i like going through analyzing every single fight and so we do the best we can within the short period of time to emulate her in training and be able to do what I need to do to be ready for anything she has to offer. Um, but of course with, you know, two and a half weeks, it's not the ideal circumstances, but I think I'm very prepared for this fight. And there's been times in the past where I thought I was going to fight Sabina. So I was already fairly familiar mm. with her. Right. Right. Yeah. Cause I was wondering, cause you are, as I said, yeah, I think you're very well-rounded. So, cause you got, uh, you can strike technically, you have finishing power on the feet, you have wrestling and you can you have finishing power on the ground. Um, I was wondering like in terms of if, when you train and prepare for a fighter, is it more like preparing for what they're going to do to you? Or is it more about implementing your own sort of game plan since you're so well-rounded? A little bit of everything, you know, I'm always going in to fight, not for that person, but for the end of the road, you know, fighting the world champion. So I try to be my best and improve every step of the way as I go be the best that I can be. Um, But I also focus on the opponent as well. If they have one thing that they're good at and say it's a spinning heel kick, then I'm going to be prepared for that. If nobody else ever does those kind of things, you know, Mm -hmm. you can't just be like walking in blind and be like, "Eh, I don't know if they're ground game, stand up, whatever. I'll just do what I need to do. No, you need to be prepared for what they're bringing to the table too. And I believe Sabina is a pretty good striker. And of course she's known for her highlight reel, you know, knockouts with her uh, high kick. And I'm sure she'll be coming in hungry. You're gonna come in hungry. Like she, um, she's coming off a loss, um, and you were disappointed in your in your last performance because, like, um, I mean, so you because you, you you've experienced so much already. Like you had the perfect debut, and then you followed it up with a win, and then you've experienced, if I may say so myself, the robbery <laughs> as well, and uh, and then you had the loss. So does experiencing all that sort of take uh, pressure off, or does it put more pressure on on you? I think it kind of puts more pressure on, you know, I like being the fighter that always puts a lot of pressure on myself. Um, But I also have other opportunities in life to seek, you know, and some people will say that's a discredit to my fighting and takes away from it. But I truly think it's an excellent thing because it's not all that I have going on in life. And I'm able to walk into a fight risking it all because Mm -hmm. I have a secure net to catch me. You know, I have other parts of my life that if the worst comes to worst, I'll still be all right. So I can go in there and fight my heart out, you know, and uh, the decision loss that I had against Macy was very disappointing. Obviously, it kind of hurt my entire future. You know, it was kind of downhill from there as far as money, as far as where my ranking was, which it kind of all stayed the same afterwards. But there's still that outlook, you know, but luckily, everybody knows what a robbery it was. Everybody watched the fight. I don't know anybody who thinks that she won, but it is what it is at the end of the day. And then the Aaron fight was just a disappointing uh, performance on my end, Um, not to take away from Aaron. She's a very good fighter, has very good wrestling. And I think I went in um, not fully uh, giving her the credit she deserved and um, like letting myself get defeated after just one round of a bad performance. Um, I'm not 
used to being beat in the first round or beat at all. And so it was kind of like a spiral down from there. And we've been really working on that in my camp. Um, you know, you could say that I've only had two weeks of camp, but I train as if I'm, you know, in camp 24 seven. So I've been focusing on making sure that I am losing rounds in training and then able to get back up and keep winning and keep fighting and telling myself, you know, I can do this. Like this is a mental battle more than it is physical. Is it that is it the fact that you have never felt like you've never faced that kind of adversity because you've always been so dominant? Um, you know, it's just uh, the timing of when it happened. I think like her taking me down fairly quickly in the first round and being able to just hold me down, which I think a lot of my stuff was just mental. There, I wasn't doing what I know to do on bottom, and she was staying one step ahead and doing very well at that. Um, and I think just once that happened in the first round, it just kept happening again. And by the end of the fight, I was like, wow, like what have I done? You know? <laughs> yeah, no. And, and, and it was like one of those fights where the, the crowd was back and uh, did that play any role? The extra pressure of that or. I don't think so. Like it's always more upsetting, but at the same time, you know, that that same crowd is always watching from home if they're not there in person most of the time. So uh, yeah, it was disappointing. I'd say more than anything, it's always about my corner. You know, I love my fans and the crowd, but the initial disappointment is who's right there for me. Mm -hmm. And so, because, so yeah, I mean, I, so the Macy Barber fight, I rewatched it two days ago. Um, it angers me. <laughs> I mean, seeing that, I was like, well, uh, cause I remember I like, I, I watched it the first time uh, I, I saw snippets again after, and now rewatching the whole thing again, I was like, there's not a single way to me that that can be scored in any way, to, to anything other than in your favor. And did any of that sort of carry over into the next fight? Do you think you were too anxious uh, to, to like right the wrong, even though it wasn't the wrong, you know, like, but you were angry maybe? Yeah, no, I don't think so. Um, that stuff doesn't really bother me in terms of carrying it with me. Like it only carries on with me in terms of money, but going into the next fight, I think I'm always the same energy of, I want to win. I don't think it matters how many losses I have behind me, or if I had five wins and I just can't lose now, you know, I think I fight the same way, no matter what. And I train the same way, no matter what, as hard as I can and always trying to improve between fights regardless. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, there's, I think a lot of maturity there that, you know, you wouldn't see in 24 year olds in, in general. Uh, and it's good to be aware of what you you seem to be self-aware of you know what you, what you need to fix and what you need to work on and um so like do you, are there any things like in, in terms of training that you know you're you're missing to reach your full potential not anymore um before there were i met this uh new gym which i was at for my last fight and people you know on social media will hate and do whatever but i had just became comfortable with them when i took the last fight and now I feel like we're in a really good place. Me training very consistently with both of my coaches, having a really awesome team. If people have been watching, like there's some really badass girls that are a part of our crew that that we're putting together and being able to train with, who have grappling skills, who have the stand up skills, who have wrestling skills, who are able to push me against a wall and emulate anybody that I want them to emulate. And that's been really amazing. Even you know Friday was sparring, like that was one of the hardest trainings I've ever done in my life, if not the hardest but it was amazing. You know, it's wonderful that somebody can push me to that limit and that I can know where my limit is. And usually I never find it, you know, and that's a good thing. Yeah. 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 So like, what is then the, the biggest lesson that you've learned in the, in the UFC so far? Cause it's a completely different experience, you know? Um, yeah. Uh, I think it's a life lesson too. You know, it's that I have other aspects in life I can go after, and I'm proud to say that as a fighter, and it's not just fighting applicable, but all this can be taken away like that, you know, and it's a scary, scary realization when you have that as a fighter. Um, and when I was supposed to make my debut in the UFC is when I had all the eye issues and they told me, you know, you'll never fight again. Nonetheless, do any kind of athletics again in your life. You don't need to ever run again. Anything that causes pressures on your eyes, you can't be lifting anymore. All this stuff, I was like, that's my life. Like, what do you mean? You're going to take that all away from me from one person's opinion at a doctor. And it's like, no, this, this is just the reality. Mm -hmm. You know, you have two torn retinas. You're too young for us to fix it this way, or else it'll be a pressure bubble and you're going to go blind and all, all this stuff. You know, it was very scary. Um, at the time I was going through it semi alone, you know, my, my parents came down to Virginia for the surgeries, thank goodness. So I wasn't alone. Um, 
and uh, actually I just started dating who is now my husband. So that was a nice yeah. support system to have there. Um, but that was a scary moment because I was like, what do I do with my life now? You know, I, I have a farm back home that I love going to. I won't be able to work on the farm. Um, I'm not allowed to look at computer screens anymore. That's what I do for work work. And then I have MMA and I can't even start to do that anymore. And luckily I found other surgeons that were able to remedy that and uh, looked hard enough and prayed and everything was okay. You know, I still have problems, but it's not keeping me from fighting. And that day, that week of time that I was going through that hardship, like made me change my whole mindset about fighting of, oh, this is what I've got. I've got to go get it. And I was like, no, forget it. Like this is a means to an end. You know, this isn't the end of my life. Fighting isn't all I want to do with my life. And I'm going to start acting that way more in my life, you know, and I think a lot of fighters, unfortunately, have it to where that is all they have in life. But eventually, yeah. we all, you, know, you can't fight when you're when you're 50 and still be at the making money from it. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a crazy realization to have, realization to have at such a young age. Um, because yeah, as you said, like there's like most people when they get older, they're, they, you know, they realize all of a sudden like, oh, I'm reaching the end of my career, or maybe I haven't even made it to where I want in my career and I never will now. Uh, and then they start thinking about their future and you seem to have everything in check. Uh, like, so, but you got that's no more. I'm... Yeah. Sorry. Continue. Sorry. I was saying like, that's why I'm trying to do the commentating on the side and trying to get a business going. Like if I could, I'd stop fighting right now and go commentate for the UFC and absolutely love my job, you know, but mm. I enjoy it. My passion is MMA. And if, as long as I'm good at it and keep it on moving, that's what I'm going to continue doing. And you probably have a, a different kind of appreciation for it now. Like even just the fact that you could exercise, you know, and like for someone who wants to stay fit and, you know, just also for your own mental health and, and those oh, yeah. things. Yeah. So what are the things you got? Because you're also a teacher, right? Uh, so I was. Um, I am still a grad student. I'm finishing my master's. There was a very uh, difficult situation with my school that um, I haven't been too forthcoming about. But basically, I uh, was given an ultimatum in my PhD program of continue your PhD or do MMA. Mm -hmm. um, it was, uh, in my opinion, pretty discriminatory, pretty unfair. Um, but I decided to do MMA because, you know, I'm only young for so long and I can always go back and get an education if I wanted. Um, so I'm finishing up my master's after losing motivation for about a semester and uh, <laughs> back at it and get my thesis done very soon. Um, but at the time I was graduate student teaching. Now I'm not. Um, I stopped that last May. And uh, now I work as a contracted statistician for Hershey, like the chocolate company, oh. which is pretty pretty cool actually high-end job so i've got a yeah got a job now you know <laughs> how do you balance that i mean because that's a that's a demanding job it sounds like well that's the kind of thing where people would normally take that job and go home and not have energy to do anything else anymore right yeah true and i've had a uh i had a full-time offer actually from them uh, a few weeks back and it was one of those things that was a very very hard decision to say no to with the amount of money they were offering with it, you know? Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's a, once again, goes back to the MMA thing of timelines and I can always go back and get that kind of job later. Um, but yeah. the whole thing of balancing it, it I think it's a very, uh, it's a mental decision, you know? And for me, I'm only going to be so young once I'm only going to have the uh, determination to do everything all at once, one point in my life. And I just think about the future, my future goals and the things that I want in the future require me to work hard now and hustle for everything that I can. And I'm not going to like it if I look back and say, you know, I probably could have done that, but I was too lazy. I wanted to chill on the side and just fight paycheck to paycheck. Um, and that's not how I want to live. I want to save. I want to invest. I want to be working on the other goals for my future while I'm fighting. And I can't do that if all I'm doing is fighting. Mm. Well, to play devil's advocate, and I'm with you here, like, but um doesn't it take away some of the focus and motivation to go 100% in fighting? I don't think so. I think every fighter has other things they do on the side, except theirs might be partying. Theirs might be going and buying shoes. Theirs might be, I don't know, maybe it's good things, right? And they go out and hike a lot and spend time with family. That's great. But I, I've always managed to do everything at once. My whole rise through my career in MMA, I've been going to school. I've been having a job. When I started in Invicta, I had a full-time job. I was a full-time student and I full-time fought, you know, and I train more hours than uh, I'd say there's one to two girls maybe that I train with that train as much as me. 
and as hard as me. And, you know, that's a personal decision as well. Like, what can my body handle? What do I feel like I need for fight camp to be successful? Um, I, I don't think it takes away at all. If anything, I think it helps me by having that other thing to lean on if I ever have to. That's excellent. But, but I love this because like now you're, I mean, at, at a young age where you are uh, athletically, you're probably about to be at your peak. So you can put more time into the, into the training and you, you know, even if the other uh, the things on the side fall out, you know, you can always get those back. Whereas like other people might fall into the trap in the future when they're too old, where they're like, oh, but I can't go a hundred percent into the training now. So I have to focus more on the work. You know what I mean? Like, right. yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, I feel like both are doing very well and uh, I'm keeping up with both. And I don't think they have anything to do with losses or places where I lack. I'm training just as hard. If I quit my job today, nothing would change with my training. Not an hour, not uh, adding another, you know, training. I I'm putting everything that I can into training as well. And just it becomes the first priority. And the job luckily has flexible hours and I do it when I have the time to. Yeah, it's all about management and we all have the same amount of hours in the day. And uh, it's not like, you know, if you're going to stop working at a certain place, you're going to increase your training hours and overtrain, <laughs> you know, at the same time, I think. And you got the merch line going. And uh, yeah. that's the first step of, uh, that a fighter should do, I think, in terms of branding themselves. And, and it's cool merch. Like, is there any, like, um, any ambitions in, like, fashion as well? Like, creating at least, uh, you know, not just as fight merch, but just, you know, there might be. So I am wanting to do like uh, more stuff that's like designs, not based around my name, you know, like have things for kids that people would just want to buy, not that have Fear the Maverick written on them. Um, that way, it's not just my fans, but people out there that just want a pair of boxing gloves, want a pair of shin guards, you know. Yeah. Um, so I plan on doing that fairly soon um, on my own without being connected to another manufacturer soon enough. But um, we're working towards that slowly. You know, it's not my sole focus right now. It's kind of on the side while I'm doing seminars and things that people want my gear, add just a little bit extra help for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're doing the seminars. Uh, it seems like, well, for me, from the outside looking in, it seems like uh, BJJ is your uh, forte. Like that's the one you love the most. But when uh, yeah. I watch the fights, I'm like, <laughs> she does like to strike a lot. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I would say my core passion is jujitsu. It's where I started. Um, the further I get in MMA, it all just kind of blends together. You know, as far as seminars, I've probably had an equal amount of Muay Thai seminars, MMA seminars, and jujitsu seminars that I teach. Um, it's just, uh, I feel like MMA jujitsu is so much different than just plain jujitsu, you know, and I'm only a brown belt um, in Brazilian jujitsu, but I feel like I am beyond that in terms of with MMA jujitsu, which is where looking back at my Aaron fight, people will be like, Miranda has no ground game whatsoever. And I'm like, uh, yeah, you could see that from that fight. I can, I, I understand. Right. But also I truly believe that most other fighters would have been finished in that fight. Um, and I wasn't myself in that fight. And it's funny though, hearing people who have only watched me in the UFC or only watched those most recent fights. And they're like, oh, she has this striking. And I'm like, man, you must've missed out on the first five years of my career. <laughs> <laughs> With all the, uh, and your UFC debut. Yeah, right. That was the debut, well, that right? was striking too though. That's what I mean. Like uh, yeah. all my Invicta fights were almost all jujitsu. Like I barely even knew how to strike three years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. Um... But that's yeah, that's the thing. It's it's the well roundedness. It's it's what it makes this next fight for me very interesting. Cause like, you would say the path of, path to victory for me would be like you know taking her down and 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 submitting her because she's a striker mainly. But you know it doesn't always play out like that. Like, um, how do you see the the fight playing out? How do you want to, you know, have this I fight go? Too many details. We worked on a fight plan no. and everything. Um, but she is taller. She is a striker. You know, and I'm gonna yeah. use the advantage that I have against that. I'm shorter. I'm definitely going to have to either get in range or out of range. I can't be staying in that middle ground. We know that. And I know what weapons to look out for, for him, her. And kind of like you said, anything can play out. And I remember during my Macy fight, we didn't exactly stick to the game plan, you know, because I was like, wow, I'm actually doing really awesome on the feet. I feel like I'm going to keep punching her in the face and making her back up if she's going to bounce around like this. And um, I don't know, maybe that's what I'll do with Sabina too, is stay standing. Maybe I'll take it to the ground. And I'm hoping really that it'll be a well-roundedness from both standpoints and be able to show everything that I have in there to kind of, uh, I don't want to say redeem myself because I never like to think about it that way, but to just show that I belong in there and keep working my way up the ladder.
Yeah. Well, to the outside world, to the, for the record, you redeem yourself. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. All right. No, I love it. And uh, well, good luck with that. I um, love the mindset. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and um, I know we're strapped for time, so I'm just gonna go into the fan questions right now. I picked a couple here, and one of them you just touched upon. Uh, you're a shorter fighter. As uh, Hiccup three 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 from Reddit says, at five three, she's on the smaller side of flyweights. Has she ever considered fighting at one fifteen? Because, so I'm actually not yeah. on the smaller side of flyweight. That's what I thought because I was confused. Sorry, because I, I, you're like you're a jacked. <laughs> oh, sorry, you know, yeah, like yeah. I'm short. Uh, that's no yeah. doubt, right? Yeah. I'm on the lower average, I would say, of 125 or or at average. I don't think anybody's that much taller than me or that much shorter. I'm pretty average at 25, but uh, I'm pretty pretty stocky. And honestly, like after the PI, the UFC PI does like these um like test on your body mass index and all that stuff. And I'm actually at the very higher end of the flyweight division, if not one of the top three, as far as muscle mass. Um, Mm -hmm. And that's hard to lose. (laughs) Um, I've tried making 115 before my two first pro fights never actually made the weight. And I was getting older, you know, at 18, I might've been able to make the weight, but even at 19 years old, I just couldn't do it. Um, Way too much muscle on me. I was absolutely ripped by the time I tried to weigh in, but 118 was like as low as my body would let me go. I think I got to 117.2 and it was just, I was walking death. I felt like absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And so I've actually been offered 35 pound fights. I've taken one of them before, won the fight. Um, I think if it came down to it, maybe. I would go to 115 instead of 35. I have no idea, but I think I'd almost stand better at 35 right now. Yeah, but that sounds <laughs> insane. I mean, like, yeah, and you're going to lose strength. It's like, you're not going to do it in a healthy way. That's what I'm going to say. Like, it seems like yeah. now you've got the nutrition down. You were talking about it a lot before the last fight that like it was the easiest weight cut. So yeah, I am definitely a 125er. Like yes. I'm very glad they have that yeah. weight class. I don't plan on ever moving from it to, to answer that question. Yeah. Here, single mouth whisker. Momentum can feel really overwhelming, especially in MMA. How does the how does she approach the mental aspect of reversing her current momentum? Um, okay, I think I already addressed that, yeah. but basically there's no change in the mentality other than going in there and being mean, being ready to go in there and put it all on the line. I think it was a mental block last time of losing the first round, getting taken down the first time and just being like, wow, this wasn't supposed to happen. What the heck? Mm -hmm. Um, And we worked on that in the fight camp and been ready for regardless if I lose, let's say, 14 minutes and 50 seconds of it, that last 10 seconds, I'm going to go in there and try to finish the fight. Excellent. Yeah. And not um, not having the fighting be the end all be all (laughs) for you. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Ren Wine, why didn't she choose the nickname Top Gun? (laughs) Uh, one, I think I'd have to deal with a lot of copyright, um, problems. Uh, Mm. that's what I kind of discussed with a couple of people, but on top of that, you know, I was, they say, don't pick your own nickname. And I didn't, um, I got fear though, from people always saying I was way too nice outside of the cage and in the cage, you know, I'd always come up and and weigh in, shake the girl's hands and be like, you know, hope you have the best of skill tomorrow. Hope nobody gets hurt. And they'd be like, you can't do that. You need to go out there and make them fear you. You need to make them fear the Maverick. And so it just kind of stuck over time. At first I hated it. And (laughs) now it's, it's uh, my brand. Basically. I like it. Um, I still use some things with the top gun. You know, one of my logos is very top gun esque. I really like the, uh, names that go along with it and then if anybody's old enough to know about it there's like the maverick tv series from way back when um that i also love uh, putting my clothing kind of uh, using some different lines from that movie if anybody ever catches it i've had like two people catch it (laughs) i guess maybe your audience is younger (laughs) yeah usually typically uh d-y-i-f-d-t-u-h-6-8 i don't know what the name is favorite submissions Favorite submissions. Well, if you look through my history, arm bars, I like a lot. Um, but uh, Chokes are the end all be all. I absolutely love chokes. Nobody can keep going after a choke. They can keep going if you break their arm. Maybe we'll see a choke, the, you know, March 12th. Um, many, many, many. What is it like being the in the UFC? Is it all that you thought it would be? It is all I thought it would be. Um, It's changed my life. You know, it went from being kind of a side little hobby thing because that's all it can be when you make the money that you make outside of it to now it is a lot of what I'm banking my future on in terms of 
Uh, I plan on making this amount of money to secure this goal. Mm. Um, the money is a big aspect of it. There's a lot of complaints about fighter pay and such. I'm not one to not complain about that. I think it's still lower compared to a lot of professional athletes out there, but I'm also not going to complain right now where I'm at. Um, it's better than I could be at any other promotion really. Um, so I'm happy and going to use every bit of it that I can to invest in a good future. Nice. Yeah. 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 So using, yeah, it's not like you, you can complain about fighter pay or you can just plan to make it work more in your benefit by investing in other places. You know? Exactly. And, you know, also yeah. as far as the competition, like it's a competition boost, like everybody thinks it's going to be, and you have to be ready for that. And that's why I've always tried to take the hard fights, tried to be in a good promotion with Invicta and work my way up that ladder. I think had I stayed in for one more fight, I would have had that belt wrapped around my waist. Um, but the way COVID ended it, you know, I had to come to the UFC and, very glad that they kept running throughout COVID. Um, that changed yeah. a lot of those fighters' lives. It's definitely, definitely. And you haven't had a single easy fight yet. So uh, maybe you've made some look easy. I mean, yeah. <laughs> mm. All right. Wallace underscore Foon. Of the younger 125ers below 25, who do you think will be your toughest competition? I don't know who's below 25, but... Um, I think I fought just about every girl under 25. Yeah. <laughs> funny uh, that they keep putting the young girls against the young girls it's almost like it was so frustrating there was liana yeah, yeah. There's, there's jillian there's macy now there's sabina we're the same age you know there's maria agapova we're the same age which um i didn't know that until i watched her fight with sabina which is crazy she's she was, great oh. yeah um so that's one of those things where i'm like yeah we're all the young fighters up and coming and i think the pool of fighters i fought is the same ones i'm going to be fighting three years in the future you yeah know? they're going to be the top 10 except yeah. Lu Lu luana you know you're part of the reason she got cut now but, but like yeah. Yeah. but like i mean i find it weird too like you know you have all these talents and you're burning your talents you know essentially you that's, know because someone is gonna because there's so much talent like someone is gonna lose three and you know and sometimes you get cut after that so yeah but uh the fake marlon vera always have to put his questions in who is someone you know that should be in the ufc but isn't yet Hmm. That's a good one. I'm not sure right now. So uh, one girl is in the Ultimate Fighter right now, Claire Guthrie, that I train with, and I think she she'll do well there. Um, and I'm hoping hoping she wins that and gets it straight into the UFC. Um, and then on the guys' side, a lot of them are already in fairly good promotions. Um, but there's a couple of guys just at Easton that I train with that are just phenomenal. I don't know specific names though that I'll put out. There's a lot of fighters out there, especially guys that should be there. Um, I have a friend I'm selfish about uh, Garrett Armfield, the one down in Florida, who's working his way up. Always takes hard fights, and two of the guys he's lost against, I think it's two of them out of three, are already in the UFC now, and he's a 135er. So I think he should get there too, uh, pretty soon. Keep an eye on those. Last question, Lily Dot the Princess. And congratulations to her. She just won Waco Kickboxing for Team USA. Uh, tell us about your upcoming BJJ match against badass black belt Amanda Clifton. So I don't know Amanda that well. In fact, I couldn't even find her on social media. I don't know anything about her. Mm. Um, it's one of those things that I reached out to Benjamin Nogueras, who I fought for as an amateur for Blue Corner. And I was like, hey, you got these super fights coming up. Can I commentate for it? And he's like, yeah, do you want a match too? And I'm always down to compete. And I was like, sure. Um, I haven't fought or trained in the gi in absolute months. Um, <laughs> and uh, I was like, yeah, no gi, this weight ish. And he was like, what about this girl? And I was like, sounds good. And then he came back the next day and was like, uh, she only wants to do gi against you. And I was like, mm, all right, fine, I'll do it. Right. I was yeah, like, yeah, why yeah. not? Challenge you probably him. feel less pressure to compete now that you have a name in the, in, in the MMA. You know, oh, I always feel that, you know, that's yeah. not my career, you know, like yeah. I love jiu I love it. But right now that's not my focus and you don't make any money off that stuff. Now we're yeah. making a few hundred bucks for a super fight, of course, but I'm like, eh, it's not life or death. And I love going in there and challenging myself so that I can become better at MMA. So I'm just excited about the match and yes, I'll still be doing it. I've had many people ask if I'm still uh, scheduled to do that. Yes, because it's when I'm going home to visit my family and I figured why not take the two hour drive up there and compete while I'm there. It's a great experience. Yeah. All right. Well, Miranda, thank you so much for coming on. So people tune in March 12th, Miranda Maverick, Sabina Mazo, great fight at Flyweight. Uh, do you have any shout outs you want to do still before you go? 
Yeah. If you guys don't mind, go follow me on Instagram. It's at fear the maverick. And then my website's not much harder to find. It's fear the maverick.net. I uh, got a lot of merchandise that we talked about a little bit. It's on my shop on Instagram and stuff as well, but go check out all my stuff. And thanks for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for coming on.